So this is the trailer I'm gonna do some work on. Yes, I know that I don't have it hitched up right. You can see I need to flip that ball around to raise the, raise the tongue a little bit, so don't judge me on that. This trailer's had a pretty decent life. My dad bought it like 25 years ago. And about 20 years ago, he put a Ford 5000 on this trailer and uh, it bent the axles. One of the neighbors told him what he, what he could do is flip the axles around so that the bend is going up, load this, that flat bar on there and make it kind of like almost a truss. And so we've been running this trailer for the past 20 years with uh, it set up like this and it does pretty good. But the uh, only problem is you can see that tire right there is, uh, well, let's just say the outside is a little bit more worn out than the inside. He's got the uh, springs on the top of the axle instead of the bottom axle, uh, bottom of the axle like they normally are. So that's why the trailer rides so high. There's probably three of the tires on this trailer that I've moved around trying to get the most, out of, most life out of this possible. But uh, it's about time to get four new trailer tires. And so I decided Instead of buying four new trailer tires and have them all get worn out, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the axles. I'm gonna go ahead and put two 7,000 pound axles instead of the current two 3,500 pound axles. And I got some axles from the same company. They're actually still in business 25 years later. Got one with brakes and one without brakes. Had this thing run the right height and uh, hopefully it doesn't need tires like it does right now. Should be a good project. Hopefully you enjoy the video, thanks. These nuts haven't been loosened in like 25 years, so hopefully they have a chance. A little penetrating oil here. I mean, luckily, we don't live in the, we don't live in the rust belt. So if, if this thing was in Ohio, probably might as well just get the cutting torch out. I've never lived in Ohio, but that's what people say at least. But in Texas, the once every two years that it does actually get snow on it, we just like, going to hibernation for those couple days so we don't really have too much salt. actually coming off one of the many great reasons to live in Texas. Ah! My original plan was to replace these springs while I'm at this, but I, I actually need to use this trailer for a project next week. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and order the springs. But uh, right now I need the trailer, so I'm putting these uh, axles back on. I'm not gonna haul anything that's super heavy, just bulky. So it's not gonna be any kind of safety issue. Just a little, just a little extra work later on to take all this back off and put the new springs on. But you know, right now nothing seems to get here quickly, so I don't have time to wait. The old axles are like two and a half or. What a stupid function. The old axle is like, I don't know, like two and a half or something. So. Alright, so the old axle is like, the old axle is like two and a half or something in diameter. The new one's three inches. So I had to go and buy new U bolts and new brackets. But the springs are the same, one and three quarter width. Maybe this will be the first time this, t this tool right here is actually useful. Normally it's just a tool that doesn't do anything. I'll tighten these up for real 
once I get the axle fully mounted. I don't think this is going to work, but we're trying to get more drastic. The second axle is actually going a lot faster than the first. I figured out that if you uh, loosen up one of the bolts holding on the leaf spring, you can drop the axle down and then you can actually get an impact wrench under here instead of having to do it all by hand. With a hand wrench, so this is a lot faster. And, and anytime you do something more than once, the second time is always faster. I mean, hopefully people learn from doing stuff. They just don't do the same thing over and over again. With a decent load on this trailer, I want to make sure that the wheels don't hit the fender. This U-bolt has a one and three quarters space until it hits this frame member here. I'm going to check to see how much the tire can go up before it hits this fender well and see if this is an issue or not an issue. It's kind of close, but uh, you can see there's only, there's only three quarters space here between the tire and the fender, but the tire would actually have to go up almost two inches. And then one and three quarters. So, the tire would go up and the tire would go up and hit this piece right here, but it's limited by that U-bolt. Uh, so it looks like we're good. It looks like it hit the trailer frame before it would hit this right here. But I'm gonna take this load to the scrap yard, see how the trailer runs, and uh, hopefully this project is done, at least for now.
1,340 pounds. $33. I'm a rich man. I can buy half a tank of diesel.